Professor's mother is in town. She flew in from Dayton. Didn't Les say she was shrinking? What? Yeah. He said he felt bad about leaving her all alone in that house in Dayton, but with Mother getting smaller and smaller all the time. <laughs> That's what he said. That sounds like Les. I'd like to meet her, wouldn't you, Dad? Oh, yeah, sure. Golly, gee, gosh, boy, oh, boy. That would be really neat. <laughs> I like meeting people's parents. You get to see what they look like, how they act. Maybe I'll throw a little party for Les while she's here. Today is Les's birthday. That's perfect. I'll make it a surprise party. Jennifer. Why not? Don't you like putting on a stupid looking hat and hiding behind furniture and generally stripping yourself of every shred of human dignity? Now that you mentioned it, I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> then it is settled. Be at my house at seven. Spread the word around. And I'll invite Les and his mother to come at eight. He might not accept. He'll accept. Her? <laughs> I'm throwing a surprise birthday party for Les and his mom. Aw, oh, that's nice. Les and his mom having birthdays on the same day? You two going? Yep. Sure. We love debasing ourselves. <laughs> you know, Jennifer was going to give me a party once, a big one. But then I decided not to quit and it just kind of got called off. <laughs> Look at this stuff, huh? This is expensive stuff, boy. There's an eight-foot base with a two-foot powder at Aspen. Hey, ski talk. I love it. Hey, you want ski talk? I'll give you ski talk. Mogul. Ski lift. Slalom. Girls. Drunk. <laughs> Fever, in exactly 12 seconds, the air will be dead. I thought you were just going to murder the news. <laughs> Bailey, I'm going out of town tonight for a short vacation. Uh, please take over for me. Bunny slope. Ski lodge. Girls. Herb, I could use your assistance over here. Andy, I wish you wouldn't bring your toys to the office. What are you doing? I'm taking down my trophies and packing them in my suitcase. Why? Because I'm going to New York City tonight. What about the party? What party? I don't know. <laughs> Bailey, you'll be in charge of the news for two full weeks, and I'm sure you'll do a wonderful job. Oh, well, thank you. Can you do that? Well, no, I, no, absolutely not, Wes. What do you think you're doing? You can't take your vacation. Now I've had my vacation planned for months. You know the rules. Andy, for the first time in my life, I'm doing something that's more important to me than following rules. Now, please notify Mr. Carlson that I'm leaving tonight. You're not leaving tonight. I'm leaving tomorrow. Then we better go see Mr. Carlson and straighten this out right now. Herb, finish wrapping up those trophies. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have Jennifer confirm my reservations. Bailey, you get to work on the news. Andy, come with me. I'll go with him. Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, WKRP. Got kind of packing and unpacking. Cincinnati. Ah, uh, yeah, Jennifer, uh, send Nesman in here immediately. Miss Carlton? <laughs> <laughs> Tell Travis I'd like to see him, too. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Mr. Carlson. Les here has decided to take his vacation starting tonight. Can he do that? No. It is scheduled for August. Mine is scheduled for tomorrow. Well, Les, you can't do that. Well, I've got to go now. It's now or never. I'm running out of time. What's up, Les? Do you mind if I sit down? Well, sure. I have anything you want. Thank you. You know, this isn't easy for me. I don't usually spill my guts, as they say. Oh, no. <laughs> Ever since I was a little boy, my mother and I have had this dream, our special dream, that someday I would grow up and, and, that, and that I would go to New York and that I would get a job on the Times. The New York Times. You think that's crazy, don't you? Oh, no, 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 Les. Just, I, I thought, you know, first you might try the Post. <laughs> I'm not going to try either one of them. Newspapers have had it. Mother says this is the electronic age. 
So that's why I've decided to go into network news. Mr. Carlson, there is an eight-foot base with a two-foot powder and aspirin. <laughs> Janice, don't be a baby. I'm not being a baby. I want my vacation. <laughs> Candy, be reasonable. Reasonable? What, what, what are you doing, Les? Passed up a job for the New York Times for what? To replace Dan Rather? <laughs> Maybe. And you're asking me to be reasonable? <laughs> Mr. Carlson, I'm begging you for two weeks. And Les Nesman never begs, does he? No, no, he does. I can't ski. <laughs> You're concerned about snow when a man's destiny is at stake? I tell you what, Les. You call him. Go ahead, call him. Call CBS News, New York. Say, hello, I'm out here in Cincinnati. I was wondering if you had any network news anchorman jobs open. <laughs> no, I want to go in person. I just want to try. You know what I'm saying, don't you, Mr. Carlson? Yes, Les, I think I do. <laughs> no, I had a dream once, Les. Of one day becoming general manager of WKRP, and I worked hard at that. And one day, Mother gave me the job. <laughs> Boy, don't tell me dreams don't come true. Excuse me, I have Les's travel arrangements. Can I go, Mr. Carlson? Andy. Okay. <laughs> trade off your vacations. When, when are you scheduled, Les? August. Oh, Bandy. August would be perfect. Thank you both very, very much. Les, I've confirmed your first class flight. I'm going first class all the way. And they do have a room at the Y. <laughs> Excuse me, I guess the party's off, huh? What party? I don't know. Neither do I. I don't know either. <laughs> Les, would you and your mother like to come over to my apartment around 8 o'clock tonight? <clears throat> Oh, gosh, I don't know, Jennifer. I've got a lot of things to do. Well, your flight doesn't leave until 3.06 a.m. No. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Carlson. And thank you, too, Andy. <laughs> New York's gonna eat him alive. Well, at least he's willing to take a chance. Most of us just settle for what's comfortable. Are you kidding? I'm gonna ship him back in a body bag. Look, if a man's got courage enough to try to change his life, and I think we should support him. Isn't that what you say, Jennifer? Of course, Mr. Carlson. Now, this is a surprise birthday party, so be at my apartment at 7 o'clock. We'll talk about all this nonsense then. <laughs> Who is it? Les Nesman. Les? What you, well, what are you doing here, and where is your mother? Well, um, she's... You weren't supposed to be here until 8 o'clock. I know, but I... Well, it's not even 7 yet. Well, should I go away and come back later? Oh, uh, no. No, of course not. Come in. Where is she? Who? Your mother. She's at my house. Why? Well, she doesn't like to go out at night, Jennifer. It's a new rule of hers. I'm sorry. Oh. Well? Happy birthday, Les. How did you know it was my birthday? Well... I hate having birthdays. Oh, please don't tell anyone it's my birthday, Jennifer. Promise me you'll keep it a secret. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, no. Suddenly I have a headache. Uh, peanuts? Oh, sure. <laughs> They're over there. Guess what I've got? I give. It's a videotape audition sample reel of me doing the news on TV. Oh. Wish I had some place to see it. I have five tape machines. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer. Um, I guess I'm nervous about going to New York. I understand. Have you ever been to New York? Not since last weekend. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Ed, Jennifer. Hi. Listen, and Andy and I were talking. Yeah, and, and we were thinking maybe we ought to just go ahead and tell Les what we really think. What you really think about what? It isn't his birthday. What? No birthday. Oh. Well, uh... That's what we, you know, what we really think about that uh, body bag thing. Uh. What body bag thing? Uh, but Les, I think what Mr. Carlson here is trying to say is that uh, 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 New York isn't your bag. <laughs> we'll see about that. I had a videotape audition sample reel made. Would you like to see it? Oh, yeah, sure, we would. Uh, how about, what well, we get, we'll, oh, we'll, go get we'll, we'll have a drink. Just please we'll, help we'll, yourselves to anything that you'd like. Excuse me. <laughs> Don't we look ridiculous? Les, they know it's your birthday. Oh, that's all right. 
Put it on, Jennifer. We got enough for everybody. <laughs> Just strip yourself of every shred of human dignity <laughs> and anything else that you can think of. <laughs> now, look at this, everybody. Serpentina! Hey, hey. <laughs> Johnny really knows how to party, doesn't he? <laughs> it's really great to see you, Les. Now we don't have to hide behind the furniture. Um, everybody put on a hat. Mr. Carlson, here you go. Oh, thanks. That's really me, Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad Venus is on the hair. He really gets into hats. Andy? Oh, no, no, no. Thank you very much. Jennifer, make him put on a hat. Uh, no, Jennifer, really, I don't... Put on the damn hat. <laughs> Am I early, Jenny? God, I thought it was 7 o'clock. It is 7 o'clock. Get a hat and stand over there. Peanuts? Thanks. There you go. Wow. I guess it's time to play pin the tail on the jackass, huh? All right. Let, let me get a drink first. You know, this is really a great send-off for New York. I want to thank you all. And I want you all to know that I'm going to do my darndest. Uh, yeah, Les, um, sit down here a second. You got any good contacts up there in New York City? Oh, not really, Andy, but I don't mind knocking on a few doors. Besides, I'm taking along all my awards, so people will be impressed with my background. Les, uh, <laughs> along with your silver sow and all this other stuff, uh, are you going to take some air checks so the network brass has a chance to hear your style? <laughs> I've got something a whole lot better than that, Johnny. Jennifer! Yes, yes. I'd like to show everyone my videotape audition sample reel of me on TV. Oh, Les, maybe we should wait a little while. You know, I've been so blue lately. Uh, oh, no, this is perfect. I want to get everybody's opinion. Uh, Johnny, the TV is in the bedroom. I'll get it. Hey, Les, uh, where did you shoot this reel, anyway? At a place called Twilight Video Arts. Herb knew the guy. Uh, they do, uh, Low-budget films for uh, private use. Mostly informational programs, I think. Yeah, yeah. Twilight video arts. Oh, you wanted something cheap. <laughs> Does anybody know how to work this machine? Yeah, I do, Les. Well, um, there may be a few rough edges. In fact, I haven't seen the final edit yet myself. But I think this will give everyone a pretty good idea of my ability. Got the plug, John? Yeah, it's in the wall socket, Les. Oh, good. <laughs> Roll them. Okay. Rolling. Good evening. This is the Evening News with Les Nessman. Today in Washington, the President and Mrs. Reagan are meeting behind closed doors, still worried about their expensive dishes, which were bought with private money, not government money, even though poor people still resent it. <laughs> we go now to our correspondent in Washington for that story. Oh, this is good. Watch this, watch. On this raw, blustery day, <laughs> as you can see, the doors of the White House are closed. A source close to the White House said the president may be inside. <laughs> it's too soon to tell whether the president is inside or whether he is coming or going. This is Les Nesman, Evening News, Washington. Thank you. In Detroit today, auto manufacturers revealed a revolutionary new car for the 80s. And finally, in closing, this little fellow was found wandering on a highway near the St. Louis Zoo. Talk about your endangered species. This is Les Nessman saying good night and may the good news be yours. Interesting, Les. I like the end of your part, but... Les! Les! What do you say, guys? Triple vodka's all the way around? <laughs> Maybe more mungo. Mm. Mm. More mungo for you, too? <laughs> no, no. I'm stuck. Tell you what, though. I'm gonna open up my cookie. Bring on my right, cookie! With the fortune <laughs> All right. You will gain something you've always wanted. Ah! <laughs> oh, excuse oh. me. Les! What are you doing here, man? I'm sorry, Venus. I didn't know you had company. Oh, no, it's all right. This is Adele. She's my broker, and uh, this is Tiffany. She's my bookkeeper. 
outside. I swear, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I believe you. Felix, we'll just step outside. Yes, you're no problem. No, that's all right. You don't have to go. Well, would you like some tea? Maybe a little. Thank you. Venus, I made a fool of myself at that party tonight. What happened? Well, I showed this videotape audition reel, and it was awful. Oh, man, forget about that mm -hmm. stuff. In New York, why do you want to go way up there? Venus, do you think I'm good enough to go to New York? You know what they say, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> well, Mother told me that if I just took a chance for once in my life, if I took that chance... Wait a minute, Les. Coming out here. Michael. All right. You come a little closer with Mr. Stanley Tarantino. This is Venus, my children. And I want you to know that I hear you crying out there in the darkness, asking yourself, am I good enough? Should I take the chance? Will I fail? Well, Venus doesn't have the answers to those questions. Only you know your true worth. So seek not reflection in another's eyes. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> Does that help you, Les? Oh, I'm sorry, Venus. I wasn't listening. Deal. I mean, what's the matter with being here? You see, I've got this dream. I want my name on that big roll call. Martin Agronsky, Charles Osgood, <laughs> Roger Mudd. Les, will you forget about New York? Maybe those guys are just 50 times better than you are. <laughs> well, it, it happens. Some tea? You know, actually, I'm hungry. All right, why don't you have the rest of this? We won't be hungry for another hour. <laughs> Thank you, Wynne. I don't know. Hmm. I got the guy to take back the ski equipment, and I bought this instead. He ain't last lived in New York. Oh, sure he did. He's nuts. <laughs> I'm just gonna set it down there for a second, for goodness sake. Travis, you should have heard Bailey with the news. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's the first time in years that it's made any sense. I don't like it when Les does the news. It's always so surreal then. <laughs> Are you going to New York or San Francisco? I beg your pardon. May I help you? I'm Lester Nesman's mother. I came here on the bus. Oh, well, uh, hello, I'm Arthur Carlson. Oh, yes. And I'd like to introduce you to Andy Travis. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. The selfish one. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, and this is Dr. Uh, Dr. Johnny Fever. Oh, yes. The beatnik. You're cute. <laughs> I, I, I'd uh, have to go back on the air now, or I'd say and get better acquainted. Okay. <laughs> oh, and uh, this is our receptionist, Jennifer Marlowe. Hello. Stay away from my son. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Did, uh, Les go to New York? No. And I would thank you all to stop putting these silly dreams into my boy's head and getting him all upset. Well, now, wait a minute. I, I, I thought New York was, you know, kind of your idea. Mothers don't create false expectations in their children's minds. Although, Lester would make an interesting anchor man, wouldn't he? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Well, that's all I had to say. Yes, ma'am. You have lovely manners. You must have a very nice mother yourself. Uh, oh, uh, well. <laughs> would you perhaps like to have a tour of the station? Uh, I would not. <laughs> well, it was uh, nice meeting you anyway. I should. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Herb, that was Les's mother. Oh, come on, get in the game. The guy's ready for the loony bin. I mean, first he wants to be a network anchorman, now he's dressing up like somebody's mother. The guy's nuts. <laughs>